Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well, today's a lovely day. It's much too nice to open the bonnet and poke things with spanners. No, instead, I'll take you out for a drive and we can talk about the real world ownership of the BMW E31 when used as a daily driver. Looks that's what I do. I drive it to and from work every day, come rain or shine. I mean, is it a practical car to do that in? Aren't bits going to drop off all the time and leave you stranded? We can talk about all of those things and sort of cost of ownership as well. I've owned E31s for 10 years and uh, the same V8 and five-speed gearbox drivetrains in E32s and E38s for 20 years. So I've got a bit of experience of things that go wrong. And things do go wrong, as you'd expect them to do on an old car. I mean, even the youngest E31s are 20 years old uh, in 2019. So you can expect to have a few problems and a few niggles. Um, but the niggles are usually minor, like that one, which is a bulb out failure, um, when I haven't actually got any bulbs which are out and something I need to fix. So it's the sort of minor irritations that uh, are more commonplace. And the major problems, well, you get the, the same problems with any car. And I'd much rather fix an E31 than some Ford or something. Now the E31's worth repairing. Right, anyway, off we go. Um, this is the M62 with a Steptronic gearbox, and I use the Steptronic all the time rather than just sticking it in drive. It's much more fun. Uh, you can use engine braking, you've got more control of the car's speed. And I really love the Steptronic boxes in these cars, and I've had them in five different BMWs now. They're fantastic. Um, so easy to use and it doesn't let you stick it in a gear that's going to explode the engine or gearbox. That is all perfectly safe. And uh, yeah, lovely. Um, so yeah, M62, five-speed gearbox, and this is deemed a 1999 model, even though it was built in 98. Um, 167,000 miles on the clock, so I've been quite a distance in this car. And very lucky to have found uh, individual sports model which is what this is so it's got an individual exterior color and it's got the csi body kit and it's got the csi interior and the upholster is slightly different in the csi upholstery and it's a beautiful car to look at right so let's get a move on I mean, first of all, this is a lovely place to sit. I mean, just look at those controls. It, it really is a beautiful looking interior and everything's to hand and everything works. And you'd be surprised about the amount of technology that are actually in these cars. I mean, there's, for instance, uh, the wipers parked below the bonnet line. Uh, it's got an automatic screen wash that squirts intensive wash on the windscreen and then clears it with the standard wash and then parks the windscreens again. It's got an infinitely adjustable uh, wiper action, which not even many owners know about, without any separate control. And we'll talk about those in later episodes. But today, this is really all about the driving. But I just love being in this position here, sitting on these sports seats, heated if it's a cold day. Just everything works perfectly. Okay, so let's look at the things that have gone wrong in my ownership. Um, I mean, the, one of the major ones was the catalytic converters blocked up, and that put the car onto four cylinders, which was a bit of a surprise. And the cost of the cats alone from BMW was 1,700 quid. So I just took it to a custom shop, had uh, different catalytic converters fitted, 200 cell sports types, and had the rear boxes done at the same time, resonator delete, and that made the car go a lot faster. So that didn't uh, stop me really, had a camshaft sensor fail, but you can disconnect it and the car keeps running, so I was fine there. Prop shaft, the CV joint started rattling at some point, but that gives you fair warning, and I think the price for that fix was a couple of hundred quid, again by Lee Shannon doing it. I don't like getting under the cars these days. Had a trance fail safe, and that cost me next to nothing, just a squirt of WD-40 in the selector switch. And uh, 
last one was the vibration damper almost fell off, but that's such a lucky find because I found one of the bolts in the drive and repaired it. So really that's all the sort of major things that have gone wrong in my ownership over 10 years. And so I really can't complain about that. And many other cars much younger, you'd get exactly the same problems. So as a practical thing, as far as things going wrong, no problem at all. Um, the other thing I had modified on this car, I had a 3.15 limited slip differential fitted. Um, and that really does sort of help with acceleration. And I'll just show you how quickly it accelerates almost to a stop here now and I'm using first gear which I very rarely do. Off we go. There we go, 60 miles an hour in about six seconds which isn't bad at all for a 21 year old car. Let's face it, the CSI does it in 5.7 seconds but I'd much rather have a Steptronic gearbox and let's face it, 840s are so much cheaper than CSIs about a quarter of the price or something like that. Okay, on the motorway, everything's nice and quiet. Very little wind noise on the E31 because all the shut lines are perfectly aligned and it doesn't have any sort of holes for the roof racks and stuff like that. No exterior trim sticking out. No, it's a very clean car. CD of 0.29, the standard one is in the sports. 0.31. So yeah, perfectly nice drive and you don't hear the engine much at this speed just when you accelerate. And on a standard model you just wouldn't hear it at all. Um, and that's one of the things I didn't like about the E31 when I first got it, it was too quiet. So I had the rear boxes changed immediately. Right, what's it go like on the bends? Well off we go, off a slip road, 60 miles an hour into some sharp corners. Hardly any body roll at all, I mean look at that, it was actually straight as a die third gear, oodles of power to accelerate again, no need for second gear. So yeah, perfect. And on these sort of sharp corners, especially in the wet, the ASC Plus T is a real lifesaver. Don't really notice it doing anything, but it's braking individual rear wheels, it's reducing engine power by closing a secondary throttle butterfly. Well, it's really working hard, but all you know is the little red, uh, the orange light flashes on the instrument cluster to tell you that the ASC is cutting in, but it's absolutely no fuss at all. And I've never been in a situation in the E31 where I felt that it was gonna come off the road or anything. The grip's fantastic. Suspension is marvelous. Uh, it's obviously it's got the sport suspension. Um, so yeah, it's, it's great at whizzing around corners. Um, not that you get much time to whiz it around these days, especially in the UK, the roads are just so busy. And here we are sitting at 70 odd miles an hour behind a bunch of cars are all in the fast lane and won't get out of the way for a superior vehicle but uh, there you go anyway yeah it's a lovely car to drive um, and that's the reason they use it every day i'm sure the 650 that i've got would be more reliable but it's much more fun with the e31 i mean for a start it look really looks the the part i mean it's it looks beautiful from the outside and the inside as well just looks like a supercar and it's sort of not really a supercar it's more of a performance car we're not up in the ferrari sort of range we can overtake a few porsches about it but well, i'm fed up being on the motorway so let's get off back on some twisty roads again and in we go about 60 around this sharp bend no fuss at all no squeals no body roll, no fuss at all. Yeah, I really love driving in these little lanes. Sort of, the other things that go wrong that have sort of caused me a few problems are sort of the headlight. One of the headlights drooped because of the adjuster problem. They go brittle and fall off. That cost me about a quid to repair. Rear lights, the loom in the boot, that sort of tears itself apart over the years. And then you have rear lights that go out and you get sort of bold failure warnings as we got earlier on. Um, but that's easy enough to repair. It's all on my website how to do it. The boot wouldn't open. That was the actuator had failed. But there's an emergency method of opening the boot, so no fuss. And then the usual problems with a BMW V8. You've got oil leaks and you've got the PCV valve that fails and manifold leaks. 
but they're not expensive things, especially if you do it yourself. I mean, oil leaks cost you 50 quid's worth of gaskets. PCV valve, that's about 80 quid. Manifold leaks, 10 quid. And I can show you a way of doing that that means you don't have to take the manifold off to fix it. And so all those little things are so easy to do by yourself rather than getting a garage to do it. And really, to be honest, if you've got lots of money and can afford to stick it in the garage every time it goes wrong, fair enough. But if you've got very little money like I do, you really do have to repair it to yourself. And it's not practical to own an E31 if you're not ready to get your hands dirty and actually fix a few things, because everything turns out to be very expensive at a garage when you take an E31 there. Other problems, gearbox and engine mounts, a um, couple of hundred quid for those. Wipers and washers, 30 quid for a new pump. Um, so I can't complain about that. So yeah, I mean, that's over 10 years of ownership of E31s. And when you sort of condense it like that, it looks pretty horrible. But really, I've had years of motoring without any problems at all. And last year and into halfway through this year, I've had to do absolutely nothing apart from servicing it and I quite enjoy servicing it and I do it every year or every 10,000 miles, it's usually every year. It costs you about 80 quid's worth of oil and filter. Really easy to do it yourself if you've got a pair of ramps and it's a simple thing and those sort of things, as long as you do it yourself then the E31 turns out to be quite a practical car. Well, I hope you enjoyed this drive with me today. It's been good fun. A few twisty roads, a bit of acceleration and braking. Shame about the traffic on the motorway, but that's what the UK's like, especially in the south these days. Well, in later episodes, we're going to have a look at a few other aspects of the E31. We'll go through the common problems, and that's common problems throughout the model range rather than what I've experienced in my car. We'll have a look at the controls, you know, the wipers and the cruise control and so on. The wipers are so clever, the wash wipe system is really well ahead of its time and even a few owners don't quite know how to use it properly. We'll have a look at the lights um, and they're fantastic on an E31. You've got eight lots of 55 watt bulbs facing forwards, really burns through the night. Um, and we'll also have a look at the sort of practical use of the car in respect to the interior space. Not much at all. Cup holders that don't work and so on. Um, we'll have a look at the Steptronic gearbox and how that works. So I love a Steptronic box, really good. The multi-information display and how you can get the sort of hidden menus up to find out very exciting things like the battery voltage. In fact, not much use at all really, but we'll go through it anyway and the AC system which is fantastic, it works the best in any BMW I've ever owned, very analogue in its operation and so on, so yeah look forward to seeing those and thanks very much for watching this with me today and I'll see you next time.